Time to finish up the wiring in the CB750. Welcome to Hack a Week. Well, it's time to get the wiring wrapped up on this project and we've got quite a few things to tackle today. We've got to get the spark plug wires connected to the coils, put the uh, spark plug wire ends on, get those back on the plugs. I've got to route the rest of this wire harness up into the headlight bucket, which is a very intimidating thing for a lot of people. When they pull the headlight on a motorcycle and look in there at that rat's nest and it just kind of freaks people out. They don't know where to start. But you know what? You take one wire at a time and work on it that way. And once you know the wiring system on Honda bikes and the colors, they tend to be the same throughout all the years. The greens are always your ground wires. So always make sure those are connected. Like signal lights have a tendency for the wires to come apart in here and uh, all that. So. We're going to get those connected. We are going to finish connecting up the alternator, uh, neutral switch, the ignition wires from the points need to be routed over here and connected. I've got to repair the uh, harness that connects to the uh, alternator. It's got a little break in it here, the one that runs down to the neutral switch. Um, then the wires need to be routed toward the back for the signal lights back there. We're not going to put the signal lights on just yet but the wires just hang there, so that's not a big deal. It's just a few wires that plug in. So where do we start today? Well, I think we should start right here with the coils and uh, get the spark plug wires on. Then we'll move on to that crazy headlight area. These are the spark plug wires that came with the Dyna coils. They are uh, a copper core wire, so that's a solid copper core in there. These are the NGK ends that were on the other wires. They're not from the factory. Those are added on. And uh, these aren't too difficult to install. They have a threaded end in there. It looks kind of like a wood screw. It's just this brass threaded section. And it screws right on to the end of the spark plug wire. So we'll put this boot back in place for now. And the first thing we've got to do is cut off these ends that came with these wires. We're just going to snip them right off. We've got plenty of wire to work with here. So we'll just cut all four off. And I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, dielectric grease that I use on a lot of stuff and put a little bit of that on the rubber boot that's on the spark plug wire end. Just put a tiny bit of it inside there. What that'll do is help me to push that wire down in there a whole lot easier. And it's just about this simple. You just start screwing them on and they will kind of bottom out and start to feel a little resistance. Right there. There we go. That's as simple as that. So we're going to do that to all four ends. All four ends are in place, and now we're just going to take all of these wires, cut them in half. We're going to take them over to the bike and figure out how long each one of them needs to be. When I worked on the coils the last time, I labeled this coil two and three so I'd remember which was which. So this is the one that's on cylinders two and three, which are the two center ones. And I just simply need to figure out how much wire I need leave myself a little bit of room to be able to pull it out and put the thing off to the side. So the uh, connections are on the bottom of these coils. They come out this way and there's a special end that we need to crimp onto the wire. So let's see, let's just uh, hold it right about there I guess and we're going to clip that one. And then this is the one that goes over, well you know what, let's just make them both the same length. Here's one of the uh, spark plug wire ends that go on there, just a conventional type. And there is a tool to crimp these onto uh, spark plug wires. I don't have that tool. I have another crimp tool that will probably work okay though. So what we've got to do first is strip back a little bit of the wire on this plug wire. I'm just going to take a pair of wire strippers and I'm using the, uh, the 12 gauge stripper section and I'm just going to strip away about a 
13 millimeter piece there, 13 or 14 millimeters. So we've got bare wire hanging out. We're going to take that wire and we'll just give it a little, we we'll get that little other reinforcement thread out of the way. Give it a little twist and we're going to bend it over like that. Now that it's bent over, we'll take the end and place it on there in such a way where that bent over piece is on the bottom side of the crimp. So let's take the crimping tool. We're going to give this a little squeeze. That's good enough. That'll work. And uh, we're going to put that into the coil. So do the same thing to the other one. I'm going to repeat that on all four wires. There's a boot that goes on the end of these. Probably should have put that on first. Put a little uh, dielectric grease in there and I can slide it past this crimped on end easy enough. I've tried to get this in a position where you can see what's going on. We're just going to push these in. They just kind of click in place. I had a question about this wire right here. This comes from the uh, points and I didn't know where it routed. So I got on the uh, single overhead cam 4 forum, otherwise known as the SOC 4 forum. And I posed the question there on the thread and a couple of guys answered for me. Uh, Ravy and Art from Bama. Thanks for the input guys, you guys get a shout out. Um, they mentioned where this stuff routes and goes and uh, Ravy told me first and then Art from Bama posted some pictures. And it turns out there's supposed to be a little clip right here on this bolt. The one that I've taken out of the case. I can't take it out of the case now though and I didn't put the bolt on. So. What I've done is I've taken my little clippy thing and I've split it. I can put it over that. And let's see, which way should that go? Up or down? Probably like this. Okay, so if I can just put it over it and then I can just take the needle nose pliers, bend that little part that I split back and then I can just put that sucker right back in there. It's a little tricky to get in there. Okay, there we go. Get the wire into the clip. I rerouted it. I had it one way, but I'm going to put it a little different here. Go ahead and just bend that up. So the little clip is holding it in place now. And then we're going to route it behind the oil lines here. And I'll grab it right here and pull it up through. And then it goes over to another clip. Now it comes up through here and there should be a clip on that bolt. So let's pull that off. And we're gonna put this clip on. Pretty sure this is the one. This looks like the one in uh, the picture that Art from Bama posted. It's a pretty large clip. I'm not sure if it holds other wires or not, but anyway, we're going to put it on there because I had it in the parts bin. Nine foot pounds, just like all the other six millimeter bolts. Okay. The clip's installed and now we can connect uh, things to this section of the wiring harness. The blue, yellow, black, and green with a yellow stripe. So the ignition wires go to the here, blue to blue, yellow to yellow, and make sure that they're pushed all the way inside the insulating plastic. I like to push them in there with a little bit of help from a needle nose pliers. And the brake light switch connects up here. Let's see, we got the green with the yellow stripe. Ugh that's in all the way and then we have a black one let's push that in with the needle nose also click that's it it's all the way in now we can take all of this and tuck it down in here into that clip put all the wires in there bend it over there we go. Brake light switch and ignition are all set. Let's move to the other side of the bike. 
There's three yellow wires to connect. Those are the ones coming off the alternator. It doesn't matter which ones go where as long as the three yellow ones go to the three yellow wires. Make sure they connect good and solid. These tend to get a little hot. You can see that on these older ones. They're a little discolored. That's from heat. This wire goes to the neutral switch. We'll just drop that down here for now. And right here we have a blue one with a red stripe. That runs over there to the oil pressure switch. That wire uh, runs through the box that houses the starter. So let's push that in. That went click. Now tuck down in here. There's two more that come from the alternator. A green one and a white one. There's the green wire. They're pretty short. I'm going to hang on to these with the needle nose pliers. Make it a little easier. Click. And the white wire. And the click. And all of that stuff will route underneath the cover here that covers over the sprocket. But for right now, we'll just leave that alone and uh, we'll get down under the engine here and connect up the neutral switch. Neutral switch is right there. It's got a screw in it. I can pull that screw out. And let's get that connected up. Now I've seen a couple pictures where there's a little retainer clip down here somewhere too. Um, saw one where it was on the oil pan, but um, I don't see where I can actually have the slack to do that. I'll have to check into that one. It might go over there somewhere, but we can come back to that later. All right, back up to the top. This whole mess right here we're going to shove up above the frame. Get that out of the way. And we've got three wires right here to connect to the voltage regulator, green, white, and black. And there's a little sticker right there. Tells you right where they go. Green is the upper one. White one goes in the middle. And the black one on the bottom. Now we've got the starter wire. That's this big black one that comes up here. And that makes its way up here to the starter solenoid. So that's going to go on this side of the starter solenoid. Tighten up that 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, there was probably a insulator over that at one time. Don't have one here on the bike at the moment, but we'll leave it like that for now. We're ready to drop a battery in here now. I'm not going to hook up uh, the terminals just yet, but let's drop one in there. I picked up a AGM battery. So we got a couple more things to connect here. Let's see. This is going to go to the positive side, this one right here. This one goes nowhere, uh, as far as I can tell. Extra red wire that's on the hot side of the starter solenoid. On the main harness, we have one that's red with a white stripe and that's going to go onto this wire right here which is a red one with a white stripe okay that's connected up and let's see this green one I have to check where the green one goes I think that that's a main ground wire that would go probably on the chassis somewhere um, it may go over right directly onto the battery cable I kind of or the battery post I'm not sure I'll have to look that one up but anyway that's a green wire that's going to go to ground the rest of these all run back to the tail light so the ground wire would be the next one the big ground cable just a minute ago I found the boot that goes over that uh, the starter cable so that's good I got that taken care of now the ground cable uh, let's see that'll come up through here and connect to the ground on the battery right there and the best I can tell is it goes to this bolt right here that holds the engine in. I've 
found a few pictures online that show that that's where it goes. There's a clamp that holds it around this part of the frame right here. So I need to take that nut back off. And then we'll The nut is removed, I push the bolt back, and I'm actually gonna file some of the powder coat off from this section of the frame. That way, when I put this on, I will have a good ground, not only on the engine through from the bolt, but also right to the frame itself. So, let's see, a little smear of dielectric grease on there just to slow down any corrosion that might happen. We'll get the cable in place here. Put all the washers back on and we'll tighten this bolt back up and that'll take care of the ground connection. Okay. I've routed the wire harness down under here so that everything that's gonna to lead to the back tail lights is now tucked under here. This green ground wire goes right here on this lug and a six millimeter bolt goes in there and what that holds on is the seat hold down latch. That's got a key in it and there's a thing that pokes in there and the seat catches on it and you can lock it. Now on this one it's different key than my ignition switch but at least I have a key for it. So we'll put this on, this goes through here there's a peg up on the top that locates it. And I know you can't really see that I'm tightening it now, but that's the bolt that grounds out the wire harness right there. You can see that a little better now, tightening it up with a wrench here. Okay, that's good to go. There's a fender liner here that goes down in there. These two little clips hold the wire harness. So, since I'm working on the wire harness, let's see if we can get this in there. Come on, you can do it. Okay, that's, that's one side. And now let's see if we can get this side pushed in. Yes, there it goes. That wasn't so bad after all. All right. Up next we've got the handlebar controls, the switches and the wire harnesses that go from those to the headlight bucket where everything joins together. Uh, the stock handlebars had holes in the handlebars where they went through and then they came out here somewhere. This set that I have actually have notches in them, some holes in them where the harness can come out. I guess they're from a later year bike, this side has them too. The ones that I bought used that have good switches don't have those notches in them. So I guess what I'm gonna do is take all the guts out of this, switches and everything else, transfer it over to mine, same thing with this side, and uh, we'll hook it all up that way. Got the left control mounted, and I took the ones I bought, ground out this section down below with a die grinder so that the wire can come out of it, run outside the handlebar, and I painted it with black caliper paint and then touched up the letters by hand with a tiny little brush. Looks pretty sweet. So uh, before we connect all this stuff up, probably be a good idea to test out the switches. Okay, so testing. I've got the voltmeter here. I'm gonna lay this down here. I've got it set on continuity testing. So when there's continuity, it makes a beep. Got the wiring diagram here, and on these switches, one at a time, I'm gonna look up the wiring, figure out what switch is supposed to connect to what when it's in a certain position, and test it for continuity. All right, we're connected up to the brown wire with a red stripe. That's the common for the high-low switch for the headlight. The white wire is for the low beam, so when I flick it to low beam, yes, got continuity. Okay, same connection. Brown with the red stripe is the common. The blue wire should be the high beam. Yes, that works. Horn button is the light green wire. 
and uh, what we're doing there is connecting it to ground so let's see let's just try touching it to the handlebars so that works signal light switch gets a little weird to test out but I can do a quick check here if I go to the center I've got continuity and then over on the left I've got continuity between the brown with a white stripe and the blue with a white stripe and then when I go to the orange wire I should get a beep to the right nothing to the left or yeah middle and right I get a beep to the left I don't so there's a couple other wires to test but that pretty much tells me that that switch is okay so that takes care of this side now here's where you're going to see why all those wires end up in the headlight bucket because the headlight bucket is kind of like your brain it's where all the wires go all the nerves go it's the nerve center so we're going to take the main wire loom here we're going to run it through that hole in the back and start pulling wires through until we get that pulled up into there okay so there's those wires now what we're going to do is take what was coming off from that left hand control switch we're going to run that between the forks and right through the same hole and bring all that up into the headlight bucket now all of this stuff is going to connect together in a while but next we got to get the right hand switch connected got the other switch all refurbished and installed tested out on the bench everything is working and uh, we're going to take this pigtail here and run it up into the headlight bucket just like the other one. Pull this through here. All right, we've got the left and right control switches and we've got the main harness here. There's the uh, indicator lights for the turn oil neutral and high low beam. We need to get that whole harness pulled up in here. That's, I believe, everything that's got to come into the headlight bucket. Now there are two more little harnesses I did not install yet. This one is for the instruments, uh, for the speedo and the tack. I don't have that one in there. Um, I suppose I could just run it in there and connect it later. Same thing with the front brake light switch. So we can bring those in. This one I can actually just push through here, pull it backwards suppose that would work too. So there's the front brake light switch. And that's my left control. This is the instruments. Just two wires. We'll go ahead and pull those through. Okay. Now what it is is just a matter of matching up colors. Really that's all there is to it. And so what I usually do is get these all untangled, get them all laid out nice and clean. And the first thing I want to do is find all the grounds, all the green wires. Start with the grounds first. So we'll get all the green wires grouped together. Let's see, there are dark green, by the way. There are three of them. You'll see a lot of these have double and quadruple connectors on them. These have places for four wires to go into. This one has places for two wires to go into. Usually there would be a wire connected here. There would be like a, a uh, round slug of metal with a green wire coming off from it. That's to help ground out the chassis here of the, the signal lights. For right now, I'm just gonna wire it up without those. I will probably make some myself later because what I've done here, um, since I have those custom billet aluminum headlight brackets I, uh, I just took the signal lights and used those as the mount for the headlight bucket normally these would mount down here further and there would be some bolts that would go through here and hold this to the to the brackets but I did it this way so back to the wires uh, so we got the green ground wires so now what we want to do is take anything on these other harnesses 
that is green and connect them up. So we just get all that crap out of the way and we pull these through here. Are there any grounds on that one? No, there's not. There is definitely one right there. So let's push that in and connect it up. That's one for the, uh, the instruments. Here's a green wire here. That one's for the brake light switch. Plug that one in there. And like I said, there would be a couple that go here and take up a couple spaces. Let's see, what else have we got? Way down here, it goes to the horn, horn switch. And that would be over on the left side control. And here's the wire for that, and there is the brown with a white stripe. Now we'll connect that one in here. And I believe that takes care of that. And so you get the idea. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with 20 minutes of video of me connecting every single wire. You get the idea here. What you've got to do is really pay attention to these connectors right here because they will tell you what's going on with this stuff here. For instance, here's, here's a blue one. It's got a little white tag on it. If you look on here enough, you're going to find that right there is one that's got one, two, three, four wires on it. That's a blue connector. Now that one would be this guy right here. That's the one that goes to the signal light. Anyway, step at a time. Just keep plugging away and you'll get them all connected. I got most of it connected up. There's um, a few leftovers going on here, but we'll figure it all out. So I'm about to uh, finish up at the rear. I've got the tail lights on there temporarily mounted, not really bolted yet, but I'm going to connect up these wires. Then we'll connect up the battery, get some fuses in there, and see what works and what doesn't. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Just orange to orange. And the green is ground. Blue goes to blue. That's about it. I don't have the uh, stop light on there. We'll get to that later. Okay, I got some fuses in there. Um, key switch on. All right, I got some lights. I got the uh, instrument lights. I got a neutral switch light. Don't have the high beam yet because I don't have the uh, connector up front for the headlights, and that's integral to all of this working. Signal lights don't work because I don't have the flasher unit installed. We do have a starter. Uh, what else? I don't have the horn connected. Uh, I can go back here and test the brake light switch. So let's see, no voltage right now at the brake light. Uh, if I let go of the switch for the front, I got 11.3 volts. And I'll push that switch back in. Let's pull on the switch for the rear brake. to pull on. Yep, I got voltage there too, so those are working okay. I just connected up the horn and that kind of kind of works. That horn's a little lame. I got a couple to choose from, but I got a horn. So, well, that's that's a pretty damn good start. Well, not a bad start. Everything uh, that I've connected up is working. I've just got to get a headlight fixture in here, that little three prong plug. I gotta buy one of those and probably it will have all the connectors on. It'll take care of the rest of this other stuff. And I did notice that off from the signal light switch on the wiring diagram, it does show that there was a double filament bulb in these. These have just a single. So um, this may have come from a different year for all I know. Uh, could be that it was off from a later model that had that. But anyway, I can just eliminate those wires if I don't need them. So let's see, what's next? Uh, get that straightened out. And I think we can probably start putting more things on the bike. Get the power train hooked up, get the uh, front sprocket on, the chain on there, and the chain guard. And then we're going to move on to what? Brakes, front brakes.
the rear linkage has to be connected up. But that's all in future videos. But uh, this pretty much takes care of the electrical system. And like I mentioned earlier, don't let it intimidate you. Just take your time. Use the wiring diagram. Use a continuity tester to test from the back to the front to find the wire you want and make sure you get things connected up right. The worst that will happen is you'll blow some fuses. So keep a few extra fuses on hand as you're doing this. And take your time. You will get there and you'll be able to figure it out. I know when you look in there, I mean, God, look at it. It looks like just, oh my God, where do all those wires go? But you will be able to figure out. Trust me, patience is what it takes. Well, thanks for watching and thanks for the 10 million views that I just hit the other day on the YouTube channel here. Woohoo! Hack a week is cruising right along and we're going to keep on going. We'll keep trucking with the uh, CB750. Got some really neat electronics projects coming up too. Uh, Raspberry Pi, I'm going to put a Windows 10 Internet of Things operating system on that and play around. But um, hoping to get this thing done by uh, maybe the end of April, something like that. There's a few bike shows I'd love to take it to. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for all the donations. And until next time. to that threaded section there and whoops it'll go this way wait a minute where am i okay